Does an AMD increase core counts to compete with Intel and productivity workloads? They have the technology with Zen 5C. Uh, I don't think they need to really. Uh, for a lot of productivity workloads, especially in the case of the 12 and 16 core parts, which you'd be buying Ryzen 9 if you primarily cared about productivity, they're generally faster for a lot of workloads, especially when you power limit Core i9 and Core i7 parts. So, you know, there are some applications where those e-cores really do work quite efficiently, but there's a lot of applications where efficient cores just aren't as advertised and you, you find the 12 and 16 core Ryzen 9 parts delivering better performance and much, much better power efficiency. And that is the other side of the angle, right? When it comes to, especially to server stuff and those more intense productivity workloads, the efficiency, as in power efficiency, becomes a huge component. And if Intel's, you know, 10, 20% faster, but they're using twice as much power, then it's not really a win. Um, there'll be certain instances where time is money and you'll, you know, the time factor matters above all else. But yeah, in a lot of core heavy productivity workloads, the 12 and 16 core parts are as fast or faster than what Intel's 14th gen offers anyway. So, mm. and then it ends up becoming a messy sort of, you know, it's not as simple as just adding those extra smaller cores and it all works well. You've seen all the headaches, even dual CCD, um, CCD designs are causing with scheduling stuff. So it's just another layer of, yeah, you know, and the e core rollout wasn't exactly smooth either. So it broke a whole bunch of games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really the productivity angle with Intel CPUs is that for the mid range parts, so like your Core i fives, you get boosted multi core productivity performance because they offer more cores. Mm -hmm. Whereas if AMD really wanted to compete with that, they don't necessarily need to make higher core count processors because, as you said, the 16 core part is pretty similar in performance to the highest core count Intel part. They just shift stuff around in, in the product stack. Mm -hmm. They could make the eight core a, a Ryzen five part if they really wanted to compete better with productivity. They probably would need to go a little higher than that in some instances to compete. But the amount of cores, yeah, they just they could just shift it around a little bit. So if there was you know a fourteen nine hundred K Arrow Lake part that had even more cores and was destroying and crushing multi core productivity benchmarks, and AMD's best part couldn't compete then yeah, they should probably add more cores to their design. But for a lot of people, like for us, right, we work, we need fast CPUs and multi-core CPUs for our video editing and stuff. I know Balen uses Threadripper, so we're not talk really talking about desktop platforms. But most people who, who, you know, time is money sort of people who need high multi-core performance are not necessarily buying mid-range affordable parts. It's more geared towards the higher end stuff. Like for us as a business, right, we wouldn't go, oh, you know, yeah, we could get a little better bang for buck by buying a $200 CPU instead of a $500 CPU. So we'll buy the $200 CPU. It's like, okay, it's a $300 difference done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's for business reasons, well, it, it just is, yeah. makes so much sense. Business expenses and whatnot, it's all, yeah. it's all managed a bit differently to personal expenses. And that, that's why we see, you know, those companies in the stability issues at the moment, you know, using... 14900Ks and 1300Ks for game servers, they're not using the Core i5 parts. Mm -hmm. They're bulk buying the fastest parts because, for, again, for business and server applications, you tend to want, for workstations, the, the highest performing processes and you pay the appropriate price for those, which is why I think it matters a little less that, like, yeah, okay, a Core i5 is significantly faster for Blender than a Ryzen 5 processor, but most people who are doing CPU Blender rendering, which let's be honest, most people are probably using a GPU anyway, but let's say they're using CPU Blender rendering, they're already looking at only the Ryzen 9 or Core i9 parts. Yeah, certainly professionals. That's, certainly professionals. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a small niche use use case for people who want those bang for buck multi-core productivity options. But most people want to know about, in that price range, gaming performance, want to know about you know the general everyday application performance. And that's why parts like Zen 5 were so disappointing is because they didn't offer those gains for the applications that someone buying a Ryzen 7 or 5 processor would be mm -hmm. using them for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think the core count thing, it, like it would be nice to get more cores and hopefully we see that with the future generation, but competitively right now, it's not as essential. Mm-hmm.